It is the final day, of course, as the ANC reports back the various commissions that have sat down report back on some of the res resolutions that have been taken. We understand that the subcommittee on health and education is on standby. The chairperson, Naledi Pando, will be briefing the media on some of the resolutions that have been taken. I can tell you right now that one of the contentious issues will be the issue around free fee education. Let's take a listen. Expenditure to 1.5% of GDP by 2020 and to grow this to 5% of GDP in the next five years. It's a very ambitious uh, target which uh, conference has set out with, they say, the intention to ensure that we increase South Africa's competitiveness and ability to respond to opportunities offered by the so-called fourth industrial revolution. Conference has also resolved that much more must be done to promote social and grassroots innovation in South Africa, that communities, uh, provinces, local government must become far more embedded in the innovation system in order to use new practices, products and services to uh, enhance our responsiveness to the demands uh, of development. There was also a resolution that we should intensify our public engagement programs to ensure that uh, more and more of our young people and the community of South Africa are aware of the value that is inherent in science, technology and innovation and that they increasingly seek to derive benefit from this as well as encourage young people to uh, aspire to pursue careers in science uh, and technology. It's also a very strong statement on the need to see a far greater affinity between knowledge production institutions, your universities and science councils, and the private sector in South Africa. There was a view from conference that this tends to be a very tenuous relationship. And in countries that are most successful at becoming uh, knowledge-driven societies, there's a very strong link between universities, science agencies, as well as the private sector. So it was felt we need to intensify our efforts uh, in this regard. Um, I won't go through all the other general issues on basic education. Very strong view that we need to intensify attention to uh, rural uh, education, that there has been progress with providing improved infrastructure, but there's a sense in which the advances are not sufficiently adequate with respect to infrastructure in rural uh, schools, especially uh, laboratories and libraries. So a very strong call that there needs to be improvement uh, in this regard. It's also a view that we must intensify and expand the Funza Lushaka, Lushaka bursary program because the conference is of the view we're not keeping up with uh, the production of teachers at a number equivalent to those who are exiting uh, the system. And of course, a very strong call that the uh, Department of Basic Education must intensify efforts to improve literacy and numeracy within the school system at all grades, but most particularly at the foundation uh, uh, level uh, of schooling with recognition uh, of some of the uh, gains that have been made over the past few years, but really a view that uh, we need to see much stronger uh, levels uh, of achievement within the basic education system. Um, we then dealt uh, with matters of, of health, and there, conference called on government to intensify steps toward implementing the national health insurance uh, uh, system. Uh, we have the white policy, the white paper rather, adopted by cabinet. It's out for public comment. There are proposals around the establishment of an a NHI fund, and it was felt that we really need to see government uh, accelerating the concrete steps uh, toward implementation of NHI. In particular, conference felt 
that the number of pilot sites we have at the moment, several of which have done very well in terms of responding to local primary healthcare needs, that perhaps we need to look at expanding the number of pilot sites as an indication of concrete commitment to advancing our NHI goals. There was also a very strong support for the proposal that is out in the public domain of utilizing the medical aid tax rebates as a foundation or basis for the to be established NHI fund. Conference felt this is a proposal that the Health Department and National Treasury should focus upon uh, quite stringently and concretely uh, act on. We then in higher education discussed the need and agreed on us having to really work more closely through the Department of Higher Education and Training with universities to ask an emerging problem of graduate unemployment and of the employment sector uh, expressing a view that students are emerging as graduates with very, very weak or non-existent work-related skills. And so conference felt we need to look at how we incorporate improved uh, understanding and, and uh, teaching of work-related skills as preparation either for employment or entrepreneurship. A very strong call on a need to relook at the curriculum structure and what is done and the kinds of skills that graduates are acquiring in our university and college system. With respect to the TVET colleges, strong support for expansion of the sector, for production of more technical and artisan skills in South Africa, and uh, appreciation for uh, what has been announced with respect to support for students within the TVEC sector. Also, very, very strong call that government must act speedily to implement the uh, free higher education for uh, young people from poor and uh, working class uh, backgrounds and also to provide support for families in the middle strata who are unable to meet the full costs of higher education. Um, the uh, conference said that this is something that they would want to see government implementing from 2018, and they welcomed the announcements that had been made uh, by President Zuma with respect to responses to the, her uh, commission. Uh, with respect to health, I've, I've spoken to those matters. Uh, there was concern expressed uh, by conference about the work of the HEQC with respect to removing certain uh, degree programs from some higher education institutions. It was clarified that this is a function uh, whose intention is to improve the quality of programs offered and that once universities meet the required criteria, the uh, Council for Higher Education and the HEQC would then uh, reconfirm uh, their ability to uh, offer uh, these uh, uh, programs. Um, issues of inequity uh, between rural and urban schools were a strong uh, view uh, reflected by many uh, delegates to conference, particularly uh, the lack of what they say is a systemic uh, program for supporting teachers who work within the rural uh, uh, education sector and that we really need to improve both incentives and uh, uh, salary schemes uh, in this regard. Finally, there was a proposal about uh, mirroring the ACD program in education uh, within the health sector because you have seen accelerated uh, provision of school infrastructure through the ACD program, but that has been in education, and the conference has proposed that this also be uh, an initiative that is introduced within the health sector because there is dissatisfaction with some of the infrastructure initiatives that should have been implemented in the past uh, few years in the health sector. The, it hasn't moved as uh, we had hoped, and it was felt you need a specific program targeting the provision uh, of health infrastructure. 
with that overview then uh, there is a full uh, a report that I'm sure we could make available through you, uh, Zizi. So this is in summary and uh, we'll try and answer whatever questions are posed. Uh, thanks very much, Zizi. Uh, Minister, I would like to find out if um, the Commission discussed what's been in the papers of recent and which has been a contentious issues, uh, issue in our schooling system, the issue of the draft basic education laws bill, uh, particularly as regards to the powers of the SGBs in school, determining languages, language policy, also determining admin, uh, admission policies, and which has been used as uh, a tool to exclude others from entering. But generally, the issue of limiting the powers of the SGB. What was the re resolution on that? If not, what was the general prevalent sentiment around that? Thanks very much. Hi, it's Ray Masaka from MoneyWeb. Um, my question relates to the uh, free higher education plan announced by President Jacob Zuma on Saturday. Um, did the conference discuss the funding model of this plan from the state's perspective? Because um, what we're sitting with here is two funding models, one being that either taxes will be raised or um, government has to reduce uh, government waste, wasteful expenditure drastically. So were the funding models from the state discussed at all? Thanks. It's Tando Kupega here from Eyewitness News. My question is similar to my colleague. It's on free high education. And um, have, has the conference discussed ways in which you guys will be going about funding free higher education. We know it has not been discussed. Can you please elaborate on how this will be done? Um, my name is Zengiz Mvumvu from the Daily Dispatch. I'm also going to link my question to the previous two questions on higher education, but perhaps mine on a different uh, perspective. Uh, Ms. Ms. Pando, I just want to know if, in, in, with regards to higher education, did you touch at all to the issue of uh, institutional autonomy or academic freedom, as others call it? Because I know the debate is about how much will this cost, but there's also a debate that was raised by a branch uh, about uh, institutions of higher learning not being regulated in terms of how they set their, their tuition prices and all those other prices. Did you touch at all on those issues as far as higher education is concerned? Thanks. Olivia Palaitile from Jacaranda FM News. I hear you did discuss implementing free education. I just want to know the students did raise the issues of decolonized education. Was that discussed? Is there anything from the ANC on that? Hi, Stembi Lembete from the University of Pretoria and ENCA. I just wanted to ask two things. The first, regarding the higher education, was there any discussion about the actual funding model of universities, so not so much the free education, but issues around the subsidy and the issues around how universities are actually funded from third stream funding and from government and how to deal with those issues for the long term. And then the second thing is, was there any discussion around with the foundational education the National Development Plan speaks a lot about clarifying the responsibility for foundational phase education between the Social Development Department and the Education Department and working out who will be responsible and how funding and training will work for that. Was there any discussion around that? Thank you. Can I answer those first? That is the last, this is the last hand. Okay. Um, Mark. Um, my question is raising. Uh, my question is relating to um, basic education. And who are you? Um, Marvin Adams from SAPA. Um, so um, we we hear about the inclusiveness of our schools with special needs children coming into the mainstream um, schooling system. 
but is our teachers equipped enough to deal with autism, one of those kind of um, disorders? Um, and did the commission speak to this? Yeah. Uh, Comrade Anva will answer on basic education matters. And I get the sense from the questions that you were listening in on our commission. <laughs> no, no, thank you very much, uh, Minister. Just, let's start off with the last one. There, there has been much discussion with regard to inclusive uh, education with particular reference to those who have special needs. And in fact, in the resolution, there is an example of autism as being one of the particular categories because uh, it, it speaks to the issues of equity and equality and, and, and a particular sensitivity in this uh, regard. So, so that is captured in the resolutions, so, so that's fine. With regard to the issue of, of, of language and, uh, uh, and the, 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 the Bella Bill, the Basic Education Laws Amendment Bill, the discussion was there had been a re resolution in the past that the authority of uh, appointment must be established but the resolution speaks to both that. You, you will remember that the Constitutional Court determined that the locus of authority in the appointment of educators lies with the head of department. There is no intention whatsoever to take away the powers from governing body. It says that that authority must be exercised so that there are no unnecessary barriers of, to, of access such as language, such as religion, such as culture or race. So that it affirmed, but it also said that we should define the role of governing bodies in the appointment uh, of, of these people. Uh, the, the current situation is that the Bella Bill itself, the, the proposed bill, it's not even a bill because it hasn't been referred to Parliament, has been uh, advertised for public comment. Thousands of submissions have been received. These are being considered. And indeed, after we, we look at it, we will certainly uh, uh, refine it where necessary and refer it to Cabinet for their approval. But it did emphasize the importance of an important element of language to say that where an indigenous African language is not taught, every school should indeed teach it for purposes of social cohesion and for purposes of the parity of steam of our languages. So, so, so that matter has indeed been uh, dealt with. Uh, I thought, yeah. no, that's yeah, okay. it. Thank you, thanks Comrade Anver. Yes, certainly on language, uh, a resolution was adopted that uh, all schools in South Africa should offer at least one of the indigenous languages of our country, and that would mean that three languages are on offer in all our schools uh, throughout South Africa. There's a very strong view with respect to that. Uh, we didn't discuss uh, operationalizing of the uh, announcements that have been made uh, by the president because we had uh, assurance from uh, Minister Gigaba um, that there would be a focus on this in the uh, budget speech that uh, will be made in February. However, with respect to interaction with the higher education sector, we did agree that we will convene through the new NEC an urgent uh, uh, summit or, or meeting, workshop, stakeholder uh, uh, meeting on the higher education uh, finance uh, matters. Um, so I think uh, we will await announcements as to uh, what is to be done and I'm sure if there is waste, we must grab that money and direct it towards supporting uh, young people. Um, with respect to institutional autonomy. Yes, we said the legislation must be implemented, as you know. Legislation was passed uh, a year and a half ago with respect to councils, to the governance structures and their functioning, but there's not any intention uh, to intrude into academic freedom. Those remain as core elements that institutions must execute since they are covered in the freedom of expression clause in the constitution but on autonomy and governance the legislation adopted two years ago which is now an act does deal with that matter and it was expressed quite cogently that this must be implemented and there's a view that perhaps it's not being implemented as firmly uh, as one would want on decolonizing uh, certainly there's reference uh, in the resolutions to uh, past deliberations on what was called people's 
uh, people's education for people's power and that we need to go back and read those instruments and documents of the 1987-1992 era to draw on concretely what we may mean by this decolonizing of higher education. So there's reference and recognition uh, of this demand and I think some of the discussion around the curriculum needing to be uh, uh, looked at again and then the presence of Africa and the developing world in the curriculum was a strong uh, uh, sentiment. Um, on the regulation of fees, we reaffirmed it's a standing resolution. It's something the Department of Higher Education and Training must act upon. We've not in any way diminished uh, this particular resolution. Uh, on the foundation uh, uh, phase, it was much more early childhood development that we discussed because foundation is very much a primary school matter uh, while uh, we've introduced grade R as a, already a component of that phase but we spoke of uh, our concerns about early childhood development and a view that really the primary responsibility should be with basic education, not social development. But we did agree that on matters such as addressing uh, special needs, we need to see greater coordination between social development, health, and the basic education department. Because sometimes you need the advice of those sectors as to how you approach uh, those particular uh, needs of, of young people. Um, I think we've answered uh, all the questions. Yes. Thank you. There's only one question, otherwise. Good afternoon, uh, Nicholas Barr from uh, ENCA. Uh, Minister Pando, was there any discussion in this commission about, I'm going to use the phrase government internships, but I remember speaking to Dr. Bladen's Monday in 2012 about the ANC's plans to ensure that every single graduate from a South African university would gain experience and bolster the, um, uh, bolster the capabilities of government departments by having six months to a year specific to their skills uh, spent in a government uh, department, a government SOE or the like. Was there any further discussion on that because it seems to have faded into the distance since 2012? Uh, Samgelo Masago from ENCA. How will previously disadvantaged universities um, be affected by this free higher education? Will they get assistance, for instance, for infrastructure? I'm asking about uh, previously disadvantaged universities such as Fort Hay. How will free, free, free higher education affect them? We've seen that their infrastructure is also not in a good state. Institutions like a TUT. Thank you. two-part question here. The first is, uh, is there a report of any sort? Who's talking? Sorry, Oliver Dixon here. Um, is there a report of any sort about how many graduates the SKA project has absorbed so far? And what's the progress and projections on that? And lastly, uh, what's the potential? The ANC's policy currently on nuclear energy is that it will be implemented as far as it's sustainable. How many graduates uh, is the projected uh, uh, intake going to be on, on nuclear research and is there a partnership between Department of Higher Education and Department of Science and Technology uh, on, on nuclear research and empowering young students for that? Can I? Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Um, on uh, internships, Tanda Bantu, because <laughs> they, they didn't say uh, your name was apart from that. On internships, um, there is a repetition of the need to reinforce what is currently being done, but also to expand that into the private sector. And so for the ANC to have quite a deliberate uh, conversation with the private sector about how we could partner, there have been some good examples, uh, such as the technology uh, uh, a small and medium-sized enterprise graduate program. And looking at expanding that was what we were directed uh, to do. But we certainly didn't see the experiential opportunities as being solely a public sector uh, provision or public sector responsibility. We felt we need to expand uh, beyond ourselves. And I think also we've begun to talk about a, a blind side 
we don't give attention to, which is the uh, not-for-profit uh, institutions, which sometimes have opportunity for young people, as well as the non-governmental organization uh, sector. And so looking at partnerships there, but very strong sentiment, and in fact, young people expressing real concern about the demand for experience at first application for a job. And it was felt this should really be looked at and there should be uh, uh, more concession for early entry uh, uh, and for you know, persons who are coming into uh, the workplace without experience and provide you know, orientation and other training uh, opportunities for them. So certainly uh, this was discussed. We um, did not uh, specifically discuss the uh, historically uh, disadvantaged institutions. But I think uh, given the agreement that there already is, uh, that the funding formula uh, for higher education should be adjusted upward, there will be benefits for the historically disadvantaged uh, institutions in terms uh, of funding. Also, a strong agreement around provision for accommodation teaching infrastructure and other resources in higher education. The HDIs tend to be very small uh, institutions and so when you have an infrastructure program, they should be a significant uh, uh, beneficiary. So uh, without a specific reference to them, the implications of what is proposed in policy directly addresses the gaps that they're currently experiencing. Uh, we didn't discuss SKA uh, in, in the commission, uh, but if you wish to come and have an interview on SKA, I'm very willing uh, to make myself available uh, for such an interview. The scholarship program of uh, Square Kilometre Array has been really excellent uh, in producing uh, young people, and we can provide you with information uh, in that regard. We do collaborate with the Energy Department as well as with the Department of Higher Education and Training on nuclear research and on support for researchers as well as uh, first entry and postgraduate students within the nuclear uh, field in a range of sectors because it's not just nuclear energy, there are many other areas. Uh, we, we do have a, a range of uh, collaborative uh, programs in that area, but our commission didn't discuss nuclear energy. Uh, but there is, uh, if you wish, information we could provide to you as to what we're doing in the skills and research domain uh, in this area. Sorry, Minister, please, before you go, please may I take this opportunity. Thanks, Sissy. Thank you for agreeing. Uh, <clears throat> Minister, the, a very key question, two key questions. Um, was there a target set for the eradication of mud schools, pit toilets, and the provision of electricity in particular uh, to rural schools? Then the last question is in relation to fee-free higher education. I note with interest that you're saying that an urgent summit will be convened with tertiary institutions to discuss education finance, higher education finance. Is this an admission that there indeed was no discussion between the institutions of higher learning and the department um, in relation to the announcement that was made on Saturday. Thanks. Well, if I could start with your second question, how would I make such an admission when it wasn't me who made the announcement? Surely it would be ridiculous on my part. Um, and then uh, certainly um, in terms of the infrastructure initiatives for schools, mud schools are clearly a target and uh, it's only in I think one or two provinces now, one province, Eastern Cape, where we still have a very uh, serious problem. And as we address uh, infrastructure for education, we should also address matters of sanitation as well as provision uh, of, of energy. We uh, agreed that we need our branches to become far more proactive in indicating problem areas of infrastructure and inadequacy to the subcommittee because we felt that at the branch level not enough is being done at local uh, branch level 
to actually identify local needs and ensure we communicate with the uh, NEC subcommittee that in this area there's this inadequacy. Some uh, of the delegates mentioned, for example, that they had temporary uh, uh, facilities, classrooms provided, and this is for some of them almost five or more years ago. I mean, once it's five years, it's no longer temporary. And around them, schools are being built. So we said, well, we need to alert the committee and then we must intervene as a sector to address uh, those areas. So we really want to see a much more activist branch that takes interest in local matters and ensures that they're addressed on behalf of the community. Thank you very much. Thank you.